Hey, what's up guys? Disney Nuts here. So you can see today we're in Magic Kingdom and I'll show you from top to bottom how I took this. When it comes to photographing the fireworks, there's a couple of really good places to take them from. Obviously, uh, the best spot is head on or to the side, which I'm going to show you now in a bit. But if you do want to do those type of shots, you do have to get here really early, to be honest with you. So I'm going to show you right now. It's probably seven. Oh, That's OK. It's right now around 720. And uh, I'm going to show you how the hub is. Now this spot here was the one that I took for um, the, one of the first couple shots I took up happily ever after. I didn't do it exactly in front over there because obviously there was a bunch of people. But here the cool thing is that if you actually move to the right a little bit, you can see that this light post actually comes out of the way of the Cinderella castle and you can get some really cool shots. Here's a couple of samples of how it looks. <laughs> so for that shot I just showed you, it took, um, I sat there for like around four hours. I got here um, just out of work, probably like 4.45, and I wanted to park in front in the center, and there was already people sitting there, can you believe it? So I eventually moved over to the side. Another really cool spot for the fireworks is where I shot it the other day, which is where I got this photo, is actually right across from the purple wall. And here what I like is that you're gonna get the fireworks that are happening on the castle, and then the fireworks that happen behind the castle are actually gonna be around this area here. So if you're gonna shoot it, you don't have to zoom into all this area. It's actually gonna be from here. To this way and here's how the shot looks okay so let's go ahead and talk about some of the equipment that we need to be able to take these fireworks shots now for starters number one is obviously a tripod and i like to use this one which is a smaller one that i i've been bringing to the parks which is the newer and it, it's obviously it's not full size uh, but it is great because it weighs less i could put it inside the bag and I could shoot off of the sides and sometimes off of the trash can. Okay, so when it comes to camera settings, the first thing we're going to do is set our camera to bulb mode. And bulb mode, what it does is that it allows us to leave the shutter open for as long as we leave the shutter pressed. And for that, we're going to actually be using what is called a shutter release, which is this one I have here. And you can find these off of Amazon. They're really inexpensive. And basically what this does is it's the same thing as you as pressing the shutter button here. You just do it here on this little remote. Now the good thing of this remote that since it's separate from the camera, you don't shake the camera if you touch it or anything. And you can actually leave it pressed for as long as you want. And some will even have an option to slide it forward and lock. And that way you can somewhat don't have to have it pressed all the time. So this one I got probably like six or seven bucks off of Amazon. You can find a bunch of options out, out there. Uh, there's even from the brand itself there's some with timers and stuff like that uh, there's wireless but I found that the one with the wire like this works more than perfect for me now when it comes to the settings like I said we're going to set it to bulb mode next thing we're going to do is actually set our ISO we're going to put it to 100 and what that means is that we're going to be able to get the best quality of our sensor possible now again uh, we're going to be shooting in uh, with a tripod so we don't need to worry about any type of shake or, or stuff like that the next setting that we're going to do is actually is our f-stop and we're going to put this to around f16. Now if you've seen my previous video of fireworks you know that I, I usually put this on f11 but in this case we're going to put it f16 uh, just for fun to see if we can get some longer uh, fireworks. Now with that said note that the time that we're going to be pressing the shutter release is going to be longer than it would be with 11 check, uh, f11. So in this case, we will be leaving the shutter pressed around for 15 seconds or so, and that should get us good to go. Now, something really important. Now, when you pick the spot to shoot the fireworks, uh, note that you gotta sometimes know what you're gonna be losing, what you're gonna be gaining. In this case, when we're shooting here from the Rapunzel area, what we're gonna be gaining is obviously the whole Rapunzel area with the fireworks exploding in the back, but we're gonna be losing what is the fireworks that I shoot from the cat. Okay, so when it comes to location, obviously we're going to be uh, photographing here from the Rapunzel area. Now there's two spots that uh, we'll be uh, doing for this video. The first one is actually right here, right to here on this edge. And the reason for that is that if I turn around this way, you'll see where the fireworks have come up on this side over here, sometimes a little bit over the tree. If they do, we'll just move a little bit here to the left. So this will be the first spot. The second one is actually right up in here. Is right here 
and you can see the cool thing of this spot is that you actually got when the lanterns are lit you'll have the lanterns as part of the frame with the fireworks in the back instead of over there where the lanterns will be on the bottom and the fireworks can pop so this is where the spot is and no matter which of the two spots you pick for the fireworks to uh photograph uh, at the end we're going to take one good shot of the bottom part which is uh you know the rapunzel over here focusing on this to be properly exposed because that's the photo that we're going to use later to bracket uh, the other photos on top of it and that way we get a perfect exposure of the stuff on the top perfect exposure on the stuff on the bottom so don't move your camera after you take the last shot so the rain has begun the fall so i guess now it's a good time to tell you about a couple of tips when taking these types of photos first uh zoom in focus then turn off your autofocus and zoom out that way you don't have to worry about the camera going crazy with all the light and that way you just focus once you don't have to worry about it again it allows you to take multiple exposures without having to wait for the camera to adjust itself yeah that is lightning and you can see people making a mad dash for the exit second one is make sure your lens is clean now if you're going to be shooting um, here in florida i'll be honest with you many times you have to uh you have to clean it even before the event starts because as you can see it's actually drizzling right now and you have your camera up at an angle trust me drops will fall on it and it will look bad when you develop your photo so just give you a heads up on that okay as we get the rain here we're going to keep on dropping some tips for you guys now make sure also that you got fresh batteries if the batteries that you have are charged i usually ca uh, carry a couple of others in my bag that way i don't run into any surprises and um, as for the shutter release uh, you can use any um, i use the one with the wire i don't like to use the one with the remote because some of them that are wireless you have to be in the front of the camera uh, so that's why i use the wired one instead and you can find them off of amazon pretty cheap as well okay so we're already set up and ready to go as you can see here i got my camera settings now i did do one change as to when i was talking about the uh, equipment i did put my ultra wide angle because i could see here that i would need a little bit more um, just in case if for any reason i think it's too wide i can always crop so it's better to have a little more than less and as you can see here the settings that we've spoken earlier uh, bold mode f16 and iso 100. now i'm going to go to approximately uh, 20 seconds 25 20 to 25 seconds for this and depending how the fireworks um how i see the shots come out i'll adjust accordingly now the cool thing of the fireworks is that you really don't know um it's more or less like a hit and miss i'll be honest with you it's not like it's going to come out perfect all the time because you have to somewhat measure the the light that comes out from the fireworks if you see it's too much then you gotta cut down the time you don't you don't leave it open all the 25 seconds so 25 seconds is more like a base but you can always adjust accordingly now the final step is actually where we put these photos into the computer and we merge them into one now we got our photos imported into Lightroom, we're going to go ahead and merge them to create the photo stack. Now photo stack is where we actually put multiple images one on top of the other and we'll do a setting inside of uh, Photoshop which will then tell to show the stuff that has more light uh, to come across through all the photos. Now in the case of the fireworks, for example, uh, you got the dark sky and you got the fireworks. So the fireworks should hopefully should be combined one to another and make it like a really big uh, explosion as well as the bottom part being in uh, uh, perfect um, exposure which is what we're looking for in these photos now I went ahead and already picked a couple of the photos which I think would be good for this exercise and I did pick a couple of other photos which were uh, taken out all the way at the end now um, as you saw before I did use f16 for for the regular shots and I did do at uh, the real end since there's going to be a lot of light I brought up my f-stop to f22 which is something that most of us photographers try to do we try to capture the last explosion with the uh, tightest uh, f-stop which means uh, to leave in the less light to, to get the most fireworks possible sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't if you're a photographer you know what i mean so i've got two photos here uh, with the f16 this one and this one and uh you'll see here basically the what we talked about 17 to 20 seconds 15 20 seconds and then here are some ones that i took at the end which is using f22 i rolled it up to the maximum and i did only four or five seconds because there's so much light going on it's going to be overexposed and here's another one that I took at uh, 11 seconds f22 now what we're going to do we're actually going to load all these images we're going to select them all and uh, using the shift key and then we're going to right click on any of them and we're going to go to edit in and we do open up as layers and what this is going to do it's going to open up one file with multiple images underneath 
Now what I'm doing here, I'm going to do it pretty quick because I've already done this in a couple of my other videos. I'm actually going to put a link here where I explain the exact same process where we do photo stacking and that way you can more or less get familiar with the process. It's basically the same. The trick is to really pick the best photos that you think and tinker with the programs and tinker with the settings what works for you. Okay. So for example here, Photoshop is now loading with the uh, four images and you'll see here on the right, we got the four images one on top of the other. And I'm going to go ahead and select them all. And the first step that I'm always going to do with this case is I'm going to do edit and do auto align because uh, we want to make sure that everything is lined perfectly because sometimes when you're shooting fireworks, you can maybe adjust the tripod or something or, or you just got somebody in the, in the frame and you just move it a tad. Well, this will make sure that all our photos are all the same and make sure that they're perfectly lined up so when we start doing commands into it, everything falls in perfectly. Now, once they're all selected, we're going to go here to the uh, blending mode and we're going to select lighten. And this is what it's going to do. It's going to show the lightest of all the uh, individual images is what's going to come through. Tinker with some of the other options. There's a bunch of other options in there, but I like to use lighten. Now, for example, right away, I know could notice that the one with this red is overwhelming. It's taking control of everything. So one thing that I do recommend when you're picking the photos, pick a photo that doesn't do too much activity on the sky itself. For example, turning off the red, you'll see that now it looks somewhat normal. And here we have our image and this looks awesome. You can also, if you want, go ahead and turn off some of the other ones and see what, you know, what combination works for you. If you like, for example, this, these two, or if you want to add in the third one, maybe this one's a little too bright for you, or maybe you want to turn this one off and this looks great. You can do that as well. Again, at the end of the day, it's what you like. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and pick these two photos and we're going to leave these other two off and I can go ahead and save this and we'll come back into Lightroom. Then Lightroom, you can go back and adjust some of the minor settings as you want. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the editing because again, we've done this before in other videos. So make sure you check that one out. And there's our photo. Now again here, we can go ahead and do a, some minor editing. We want to bring down the highlights uh, to make those uh, uh, these um, lanterns pop, but we don't want to bring it too much that would, you know, makes it looks all faded. And then once here, uh, another thing that I like to do is basically run a little bit of the dehaze, and that will take off some of that pop stuff there that we don't like. And then another thing that I would do maybe is I'll paintbrush and I'll go into the highlights and I'll do that only into the fireworks, and that will make the fireworks the details come out. There we go. And there we go. I won't do too much of the editing because that's the part that I want you guys to do to bring out your own creative side and to do what you like to do. Sit here from Magic Kingdom. Hopefully you enjoyed these tips and how I shot the photograph at the Rapunzel area. So hopefully this could help on your trip here to Magic Kingdom. Now, if you do take the photo, feel free to send me a link or a DM. I'd love to see um, how yours came out. Okay guys, if this is the first time watching these videos, my name is Dizzy Nuts. As you saw, I do videos of photography here around the parks as well as food review of my wife. So feel free to subscribe, uh, share, and comment. It helps these videos to keep on flowing. So until then guys, good night and stay awesome. See ya, bye. Wait, if that door opens. It does open. <laughs>